Welcome to Al TV's Israel Daily. I'm Amit Harari and coming up in today's newscast. Operation Home and Garden, IDF's tracking terror infrastructure in Jenin with the aim of battling the terrorist command center in the area. Meantime, Turkish intelligence reportedly uncovering ghost network of Mossad operatives tracking non-Turkish citizens. And later, President Herzog announcing the extraordinary president's honorees for 2023, celebrating Israel's 75th anniversary. Overnight, the IDF launched a major anti-terror operation in the Palestinian terrorist hotbed of Jenin in northern Samaria. As the operation is ongoing, large numbers of security forces are operating in the city, with the operation focusing on terrorist command center in the refugee camp in the center of the town. Altavi Steve Leibovich has been following the developments. Seven Palestinian terrorists were reportedly killed in the early stages of the operation, dubbed Home and Garden, as ground forces converged on Jenin from several directions and some 15 airstrikes were reported. Dozens of combatants were reportedly injured. The army said the attack focused on a so-called war room serving terrorist groups in the city and the so-called Jenin Battalion, which served as an observation post and gathering place for armed terrorists before and after terror acts. National Security Advisor Tzachi Negbi said Iran transfers weapons and money to the Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Jenin. Hanegbi said the IDF is taking out explosive and rocket manufacturing labs. The initial IDF announcement at about 1 a.m. confirmed that security forces were engaged in a wide-scale effort to thwart terror throughout Jenin and had struck terrorist infrastructure in the city. Palestinians reported that residents had been sent text messages from the IDF asking them to remain indoors, while some members of armed terror groups received texts urging them to lay down their arms and turn themselves in. Some 25 wanted men were reportedly arrested. A senior government official said that the goal of this extensive operation is to end Jenin's role as a sanctuary city for terror, and it will last as long as it needs to. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant hailed the operation in a tweet, saying that anyone who harms the citizens of Israel will pay a heavy price. The Jenin camp has become a center for a, a terrorist uh, uh, activity. Uh, those responsible for carrying out a terror attack against both civilian population and uh, uh, security uh, uh, forces. Uh, we will act in a targeted uh, manner. Uh, it's very important to me to emphasize that uh, we will take any efforts, any efforts to prevent harm to the local uh, civilian population. For weeks, there had been speculation about a major Israeli military operation in northern Samaria following a string of terrorist shooting attacks and intense resistance to IDF raids in Palestinian cities. And joining us now to elaborate on all the latest updates from Janine is former head of the military's prosecution office for Judea and Samaria, Lieutenant Colonel Reserves and Attorney Maurice Hirsch. Maurice, the IDF has now launched a major anti-terror operation in Janine. Why Janine? Why now? And why does Israel need to resort to a major operation of this kind? Well, unfortunately, what we've seen in Janine is a massive buildup of terror forces from every side of the, the, the terror map from Hamas uh, uh, terrorists, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, um, Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine, all of the terrorists, all being guided and pushed forward um, by Iran, obviously, have joined forces together in, in Jenin. And they've carried out, just since the beginning of the year, 50 different terrorist attacks. Um, dozens of terrorists from other areas have then escaped into Jenin, looking to find safe haven there. Janine has become the hotbed of terrorism we saw just a week ago. One of the more possibly uh, um, dangerous developments in the area, um, terrorism-wise, with the firing of a, of, of albeit a, a, a primitive rocket, but a rocket towards uh, uh, um, Israel from the terrorists coming out of Janine. These are all developments that required Israel to take very firm uh, uh, action against the terrorists. It's clear that the Palestinian Authority has lost control in Janine. And so Israel must fulfill, fulfill that vacuum. 
Can you safely say that really Janine is the hotbed of terrorism in Israel? I mean, more, you know, outside Gaza, of course, eastern Jerusalem, Janine is the hotbed? Without question. Janine and, and, and really the area of the Shomron um, over the last probably year and a half, two years, has become the hotbed of terrorism. Uh, Nabla Shechem uh, um, started the whole process of, of this downward spiral already with the, the, uh, the Lion's Den um, terrorist organizations that were popping up. Um, then with Mahmoud Abbas calling for revenge when those terrorists were eliminated. Um, and then everything developing into the, also the involvement of the Palestinian security forces in active fighting, active acts of terrorism against Israel, Israelis, and uh, uh, the Israeli security institution. This is really a breakdown of all types of law and order in that area. And what we've seen today, I mean, just a, you just need to look at the pictures coming out, being uh, uh, presented by the IDF. Of, of dozens of IEDs that have been that have been caught in 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 Janine, um, bomb making factories that have been exposed. The, these are armaments which are seeing more of the Lebanonization uh, um, of Janine of that entire area, making it really into a terrorist no go zone, um, which is why we needed to go in as soon as possible. We're seeing the pictures coming in the whole day. Now, the army says that the operation is ongoing and will continue as long as needed. Are we talking hours, days, weeks, maybe? I would assume that we're talking somewhere in the region of at least a few days um, up to a week. I can't see that we're going to uh, um, require a longer than that, an operation that, 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 that's longer than that. I think what we're, we should reasonably expect is an ongoing operation within the next three to four days really covering the week um, if you take into account the time of year the time of month as well it's a it's a full moon for those that are that are following the the, the moon and what's going on so we're really seeing really a, a perfect uh, um, circumstances for Israel to be operating both during the day and the night um, obviously that's a, a, a tactical advantage um, for Israel as well and as you mentioned, the focus is on Janine, where obviously many recent terror attacks were planned and where there was heavy resistance during more limited incursions. If this operation is a success this time, what can we expect will be the result really on the ground? I think that what, we're, that what Israel's looking to do is at the moment to really cut down, as it were, cut down the grass, make sure that the, that the, that the functioning central commands that are really bound together the different terrorist organizations and allowed them to function in cooperation, that those are destroyed, that the senior terrorists and, and really the, the, the more dangerous terrorists are either arrested or eliminated, that all of, all of, and I stress as many as possible, possibly all of the bomb making uh, factories that we know that exist um, are also uncovered and dismantled. And obviously the most important of all, making sure that there is no remnant of any possibility uh, uh, of the terrorist organizations to fire any type of missiles towards Israel from the Janine area. Um, no way tolerate, Israel can no way tolerate turning Janine into another Gaza uh, um, with its really its proximity also to, to much of Israel's coastal plain. Um, that would be a completely untenable situation. But Janine is not the only problem, isn't it? I mean, might Nablus or somewhere else in Samaria be the next target of an IDF anti-terror operation? I think that the, the, the operation in Janine should be a, a really a deterrent for, for, the others, uh, uh, for the other terrorists operating in the area. Um, should they not understand the message that Israel's tolerance for the ongoing terrorism um, really has come to an end and that Israel will be now taking much more forceful steps in order to deal with the terrorist threat, um, then uh, they'll, be, they'll be missing the message. And if necessary, I'm sure that Israel is uh, uh, prepared to then move on and roll on with the next uh, um, operation as the security uh, uh, situation on the ground may require. We've seen the whole area of Khawara, the whole area of Nablus, of, of, of Shechem, also producing dozens and dozens of terrorists. If we remember just, the, the, um, just a few months ago when uh, the murderers of the, of the, of the D family um, of, of, of Lucy and, and, and the two girls, um, they were the ones who ran off into, into Shechem, into Nablus, and in the understanding that they would find their safe haven. Um, Shechem is definitely a problem, um, and if the terrorists carry on with their terrorist activity, then I assume that we will uh, be required to, to, to carry out a similar uh, um, operation there as well.
We'll race to a successful operation ahead and quiet days. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me.